What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Radaxa Zero 2 Pro. And I actually wasn't even aware that this was on the market yet. This is really packing some power for the form factor. As you can see here, it's not coming in much larger than the Raspberry Pi Zero, but it's offering about five times the performance that that thing can put out. And it really comes down to the six core ARM SOC they opted to use here. This thing is super tiny. It's got built-in eMMC storage, 40 GPIO pins, USB Type-C, built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Plus, out of the box, this supports Linux and Android. There's actually a bunch of different operating systems that we can install on this. We've also got a micro SD card slot down here, and I wanna give you a size comparison because again, it's very reminiscent of the Raspberry Pi Zero. So we've got the Zero W here, and I've actually got some Zero Twos in projects right now. But yeah, it's not coming in much larger. It's just a little bit wider. So right there where the GPIO pins are, we've got that little extra section on the Redaxa Zero 2 Pro. And of course, it's coming in a lot smaller than the Raspberry Pi 4 or the Raspberry Pi 5. And I'll tell you, I mean, this is outperforming the Raspberry Pi 4. And in some cases, it can outperform the Raspberry Pi 5, especially on the GPU side of things with the SOC they opted to use here in the Zero 2 Pro. But yeah, I mean, we've got a very small form factor unit. And from what I've tested so far, this thing's actually putting down some really good power given the form factor here, because this is actually powered by the Amlogic A311D. This is a six core ARM SOC. We've got four A73 cores up to 2.2 gigahertz and two A55 cores at 1.8. The GPU is the Mali G52 MP4. So we've got a four core GPU there and it's got an NPU built in, which will do up to five tops of AI performance. 4 gigabytes of LP DDR4 RAM. It also has onboard eMMC storage, and you can pick this up with either 32, 64, or 128 gigabytes of storage. Plus, we've got that micro SD card slot. We can run our operating system from that if you want to, but that eMMC storage is going to be much faster. Onboard Wi Fi 5 and Bluetooth 5.0. And we've got some operating system options here Debian, Ubuntu. I believe I've seen a Manjaro version floating around that'll work on this board. And we've got Android, so we can get the tablet version or the TV version. I'm going to go with the tablet version here. But before we move into testing, I wanted to go over the I.O. here, because even though we're working with such a small board, we've actually got quite a bit. Micro HDMI, USB 2.0, so this is an OTG Type-C port, and we've got USB 3.0 USB Type-C. It's got those 40 GPIO pins up top. It's also got a DSi connector, so we can connect a screen to this instead of using that micro HDMI micro SD card slot, plus we've got our power button, mask ROM button, and a fan header because they do offer a nice little cooler for this. And when it comes to these Redaxa boards, I really love their documentation over on their website. So with most everything that they release, they've got all the information you need to know about it over there. I'll leave a link in the description. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to get my hands on the heatsink just yet. It's gonna be shipping in about a week. So I do need to cool this thing but I do want to make sure that I can keep this thing cool. And luckily, these M.2 heat sinks actually fit right in between the GPIO and the uh, front IO. This is a pretty beefy one from Thermal Right. I'm going to be using an external fan just to make sure I don't thermal throttle this thing. But, uh, you know, as soon as I get that official heat sink, it's got the built in fan and it'll plug right into the header. For now, this will work out. And I've done some testing so far. Even under extreme load with the small fan that I have off to the side, it's not going to hit thermal throttle. In this first look video, we're going to be testing out Android on the Redaxa Zero 2 Pro. And the main reason I wanted to get my hands on this little board was to upgrade my U console. Now this thing is actually powered by a Raspberry Pi CM4. Round back, it's got the CM4 layout, but I do want to kind of modify this so I can put a more powerful chipset in here. And uh, unfortunately, they're not offering any adapter boards. This is something that I'm looking into right now. I do love this thing, but I would love to have some more power in the U console. All right, jumping right into Android here. First things first, this does not come preloaded with Google Play. This is something that I had to sideload, but luckily there are easy ways out there to do this. You will have to verify your system with your account over on the website. That way you can download and use Google Play. But with what I've got set up here, everything is working. I've downloaded a few games. Now there are some that just won't launch like Call of Duty Mobile. That was one that I really wanted to test here. Unfortunately, I just couldn't get it to work, but I was able to get some of these Netflix games to run. And I was really surprised by how well they perform like Vice City and even Shredder's Revenge. We're gonna be taking a look at those and I'm pretty surprised at how well they work on this system. 
By the way, the Zero 2 Pro that I have here is the 64 gigabyte model, so we've got 64 gigabytes of storage and four gigs of RAM. I really wish they would offer an eight gig model of this, but uh, four for my needs is gonna be more than enough. Let's head over to IDA64. You can see that this is clocking up to 2.2 gigahertz on those uh, larger cores there. And from display here, it does say that I'm running at 4K, but this is not 4K. The monitor I'm plugged into only goes up to 1080p anyway. 60 hertz, so we've got that Mali G52. Not too bad. Now, it's not gonna have wide vines, so if you did wanna run Netflix or something like that, it's gonna be in SD, but YouTube actually works really well. And what I'm noticing here is once I go to YouTube, my game capture is kind of getting confused about switching over to HDR, so it might look a little washed out or a little too saturated. Just on the screen itself, it looks fine. My game capture is just doing something funky with the HDMI connection here but we've got some 1080p playback looking really good. And with these chips, I mean, it will do 4K, but it's not gonna be a flawless, no drop frames, 4K across the board. 1080p on the other hand is super smooth, at least here on Android, because that's all I've tested so far. And I will be doing another video. If I can get Manjaro installed on this, I think it would be pretty cool. With the tablet version of Android that I opted to use here on the board, it looks just like the basic AmLogic build that comes out for a lot of these boards. And there is an Android TV version available, but I've gone through the settings just trying to find specific settings for this board like fan control, and there's nothing here with this one yet. But so far, it's been a pretty smooth experience, and now what I want to do is move over to some native Android gaming, plus we're going to test out some emulation. And uh, we're going to start out here with, let's do Minecraft, because... Everybody knows Minecraft. And the one that I really wanted to test was Call of Duty Mobile, but like I mentioned, it just won't launch. So we'll get into this. I'm using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. I mean, it paired right up. We can actually navigate the full operating system. And I did have to take this down to eight chunks. When I booted it up, it was at 12 chunks and I did notice a little bit of stuttering every once in a while. But at eight chunks, it's pretty smooth. And I've still got fancy graphics on and everything like that. So Minecraft is pretty playable on this board. I know that this isn't a hard game to run, but I was really impressed that we were actually able to play these Netflix games here on this board. Most of the time, we can't even get Netflix from Google Play to install on these boards. And again, Widevine is non-existent, so you're not going to do 4K content with Netflix, only uh, SD, but we've got access to the games they offer. And right now, I mean, these are some of the best games on Android, in my opinion. Another one I tested here was Vice City, and this is the definitive edition. So it does look pretty good, but I did have to drop the resolution down. So from options, graphics, resolution, halfway, classic lighting is on, and I've turned Bloom off. This only runs at 30 FPS, even on the highest end Android phones, and we're at 30 right now. Didn't notice any major stuttering or anything like that. And the Xbox controller just worked out of the box pretty decent. Oh, I forgot that was there. Definitely not enough time to stop. And finally, we've got Stardew Valley. This is a really easy game to run. I mean, it runs on some of the lowest end single board computers that we've tested. And if you've played this before on Android, you might notice something a little odd. Everything's really zoomed out. Our GUI is also pretty large and there's no way to change this. This is some kind of bug that I've never run into before. Uh, some people might be into playing it like this. I mean, you can definitely see a lot more of the map, but personally, I'd like to be in a bit closer. So for native Android gaming, we've got a lot of the low-end stuff covered with this little chipset in this board, but now it's time to move up to some emulation. And we're not going to go crazy with it, go up to Dolphin or anything like that. We're going to start out here a little easy with Dreamcast using the Redream emulator. And with this, I was able to upscale to 1280 by 960, but Dreamcast isn't super hard to run, especially with the Redream emulator. Either way, getting some great performance. FPS is up in the top left-hand corner. Playing your favorite games like Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Crazy Taxi, Soul Reaver. It's going to work out great on this little board. Next, we've got some N64, and I'm using the standalone version of Moop N64 plus FZ from Google Play, Beetle Adventure Racing. I went through and tested a couple more N64 games. This AmLogic chip actually handles them pretty well. I didn't do any upscaling, and there's a chance with easier to run games we could, but I'd kind of leave it at native. And the final thing I wanted to test was some PSP. Chains of Olympus, standalone version of PPSSPP, Vulcan back in, 1X resolution. 
with the easier to emulate games, going up to 2x and even 3x is possible with a lot of them. But when it comes to the uh, God of War series, uh, Ghost of Sparta, Chains of Olympus, 1x is really where it's going to be with this little system. I completely understand that a board like this isn't for everybody, but seeing, you know, the performance bump over the Raspberry Pi Zero and the Zero 2 is really impressive here. This is going to work out great for a lot of super small projects, and again, one of the big reasons I picked it up was for my U console, so as soon as I can figure out a way to get this integrated, I will be making a video. But in the meantime, if you want to see Debian or Ubuntu running on this board, let me know in the comments below. I wouldn't mind making another video. And if you're interested in learning a little more about the Redaxa 02 Pro, I'll leave some links down below. But that's going to wrap it up for this first look video. I will have at least one more coming. And like always, thanks for watching.